Okay, so that's scenario two where you're requesting more current than the alternator is able to produce. Okay, let's look at scenario three for people like myself and probably you too who are complete base heads. What we want to do is we want to turn this volume way up. I mean, we don't know how to stop. So let's put some little fat guys up here. We want to just keep on and keep on and keep on and keep on turning up the volume. Okay, what that does is our amplifier can produce 1700 watts. We want to hear what that sounds like all the time. So our amp is putting out 150, requesting 150 amps. So right now we see we need 220 amps of current to support this system and our base habit. And we only have 90 amps of new current going into the system because the alternator is the only thing that can produce current. What happens in this scenario is the alternator starts to really sweat bullets because he's not able to produce this power, which he's not happy anymore. And he once again starts to sacrifice voltage for current and now the rectifiers in this alternator are on fire they're about to be destroyed actually you're causing irreparable harm to your alternator when you do this and since the alternator is not able to produce much enough current to play the system and charge the battery what happens is the battery starts to lose its charge too and since it's being requested to put current into the system it's no longer getting new current and it starts to sacrifice voltage for current too. So you'll see the voltage on that battery drop too. It may not go down to 10 volts, it may go down to 11 or something like that. But when you see the voltage on this battery start to drop below 12, you've got a problem because you know that your system is requesting more power than you can give it. So, scenario three, your alternator struggling, your battery struggling, and you see these video clips they put on and those uh, volt meters they have in the back, you see them showing stuff like 9 volts and 9.86 volts and 11 volts. That system is struggling and it's damaging the alternator and if they've got uh, starter batteries, the starter batteries, the only battery that they have in the car is damaging irreparably the starter battery too because when a starter starting battery sees 10 volts it can never once again go back to the uh, power that it had when it's new because it's been damaged and low voltage will just kill an amplifier I'm gonna do a video on why low voltage kills amplifiers next okay so this is scenario 3 where you're really just killing everything because you have a load that is way more than your alternator and battery can produce. So those are the three scenarios and this is the scenario that a lot of us fall into because we, d we haven't upgraded our system. So what should we do if we like a, a whole lot of bass and we don't want to kill our alternator and our battery? What things can we do and which ones are most important? By the way in this scenario the capacitor is laid out here flat somewhere because he doesn't have any power to give the system and the system doesn't have any power to charge him up so he's absolutely useless to you at, at this time. Okay, so what things can we do to make uh, the alternator and the battery happy at this point? The most important thing for you to do first is think of this as two guys lifting, that fr lifting a refrigerator. If this guy is a whole lot stronger, so let's give him some bigger arms that makes life a whole lot better. So let's say instead of 90 amps he now can put 190 amps into the system. So already you've made him so he's not sweating bullets anymore. He's not happy but he's not sweating bullets because you've got 190 amps of current into the system and it's only requesting 220. So you've got like a 30 amp lack. And what will happen is the battery will be able to uh, 
give you current to do that. So the battery can stay at 12 volts and the alternator will be like at 13 volts. So what else can we do? That's stage one. Get yourself a new alternator. That's the most important thing. And even if you can't afford uh, an Irigagi 300 amp alternator, the most powerful alternator you can afford would help you out a bunch. Then what we can do is we can start adding additional batteries to support this battery. That means that the, the alternator knows that it's got backup and what this looks like is you're going to have a, uh, a current source in parallel with voltage sources. And then over here you will have your load. So as the alternator puts current into the system, the, the bat, that current will come in and charge these batteries and they will put power out to handle the load. Oh, I don't think you guys can see this because I think it's outside of the camera. But basically you have a current source in parallel with the batteries. The alternator is will charge the battery, then the batteries will help power the system. So everybody will be happy in this situation when you start adding additional batteries after you've produced a better alternator. So that's the most important thing and then at this point you can start adding additional batteries as many as you want because they would just make the situation that much better but alternator first batteries and then if you've got a system where your alternator is able to power the entire system then you can put a capacitor into the system okay now I'm gonna make some videos about putting low voltage to an amplifier what that does to the amp internally and I'll do a video on uh, how to tell how much power an amp has